I was at a church dinner and I was helping as we do and my back started really aching and I'm thinking, I haven't lifted anything to make it ache. I thought that something was going on. Chris Bourgeois, a registered nurse, had experienced that pain before, eight years before when she suffered something called a pelvic organ prolapse. If I just touch myself in my perineal area, there was a bulging there that isn't normally there. Pelvic organ prolapse is a condition which starts with the weakening of the muscles or ligaments in the pelvic area. Over time, this weakening can cause the uterus, bladder, and or bowel to herniate or drop, sometimes dropping right through the vagina. The most common risk factor is pregnancy with vaginal deliveries, um, but anything that put chronic pressure on your pelvis, chronic cough, people with asthma, um, smokers with um, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, constipation, um, obesity, weight gain, and you know, some, some physical activity. So um, people who run a lot, um, people who have occupation where they lift a lot. So with years of chronic challenging your pelvis, eventually it can result in, in some of these uh, issues. Doctors Roger Lefevre and Janet Lee are among a handful of urogynecologists who specialize in pelvic organ prolapse in the Boston area. They say despite efforts to educate the public, many women are too embarrassed to seek help. It's not something that people talk about with their friends or around the dinner table. And um, it's still one of those things that I have commonly will see, particularly older ladies, elderly ladies, who have advanced stage prolapse with literally the uterus hanging inside out. And they've been living this for years and years. And um, they haven't had any pelvic examinations for maybe a decade or more. They've never complained about it. And they've just been really scared. Treatment for prolapse depends on the type of prolapse, the patient's overall health, prior surgeries, desire to retain sexual function, and the preference of the patient. For some patients, physical therapy is used to strengthen the muscles in the pelvic area and to reduce symptoms. The other option is to use a pessary, which is basically a sort of rubber device that you place inside the vagina, much like a diaphragm that people use for contraception. And it just mechanically holds things up so the patient's more comfortable and they might be able to urinate or defecate more easily. There are also a range of surgical options. Surgery can be performed vaginally, laparoscopically through small incisions in the abdomen, or even robotically. We take a minimally invasive approach and that's going to facilitate your recovery, um, less time in the hospital um, and, and getting back to your physical activity, to your work a little quicker. Surgery is usually outpatient or requires an overnight stay. It involves either using the patient's own tissue to hold the organs in place or using a synthetic or biologic mesh. Unfortunately, recurrent relapse is not uncommon. Proper evaluation of symptoms and lifestyle before treatment decisions are made can help. The urogynecology program at BIDMC is made up of a team of specialists, including urologists, gastroenterologists, pelvic floor therapists, and colorectal surgeons, all who are on site and available for consultation. When you come to see one of our pelvic floor surgeons in urogynecology, you're really accessing the entire pelvic floor network. Uh, of physicians here at BIDMC. With the symptoms gone, Chris is back to leading an active lifestyle, and she offers this advice. It's uncomfortable to say that you've had a prolapse, that part of your body that's supposed to be inside is hanging out or partially prolapsed, or that there's urinary incontinence. I think that we keep that to ourselves. I think that there are a lot of options available to women if women feel comfortable with their physician and talking about what's going on with the body, what their symptoms are. You think that finding some physician who matches your personality, who connects with you, who offers you the information and support that you need is really important to the success of all of that. We're working at changing the mindset of people that this is oh, this is a condition of old age. That's what happens when you get old or, or, or menopausal and, and uh, um, you know, this is part of life. And you know, we, we, we do our best to change, to change this mindset and, and, and let the patient know there is help out there. There are people like us that can really talk to you, do conservative things, non-surgical things, all the way to surgical things.